Revolución Industrial tiene impacto en la música desde 1930 a 2000 porque bajó en los trópicos cantones. Nigeria tiene nuevos estilos y está y es animado. En la música está división, entrenado y está excelente. We all know Disney, right? You know that one corporation that basically owns everything now? Well, I'm not here to talk about that. Nope. Instead, I want to talk about something we all know, love, and can relate to in some way. Disney music. Have you ever wondered why Disney music is so catchy and when you listen to the lyrics, it's kind of relatable to real life? The reason why is because Walt Disney wanted it that way. Back in 1937, during the production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Walt wanted to add some music into the film. However, he didn't want his characters to just burst into song. Instead, he wanted the music to help tell the story. And that's how they did it back then and still up to this day. We'll take a deeper dive at Walt's philosophy later, but right now I'm gonna look at the music a little more. So, have you ever noticed that whenever a character starts to sing, it tends to be related to the topic that was just mentioned before? Let's use 1967's The Jungle Book as an example. Remember this scene? Look, now it's like this, little britches. All you gotta do is look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. So, I'm sorry, uh, I would apologize in advance for cutting these songs short because they're amazing, but we're on a tight schedule. So as you saw, the transition from singing to song, or the transition from talking to singing, was flawless. It's also worth noting that the song is placed perfectly so we get the information we need to continue our story while being entertained at the same time. So this music also helps drive our plot forward, so instead of being stuck, or instead of it dragging, dragging on forever and ever. Now, the music can also help tell the theme of the, the movie. Let's look at 1998's Mulan as our next example. So, let's see if you can find the theme of this one. As we just saw, she doesn't really know who she is, but at the end of the day, she finds out or she realizes who she truly is while saving the day. So this, this music, along with driving the plot forward, also acknowledges the theme of some movies. It can also be used to what's it called? be relatable, because when you notice she was singing about how she doesn't know who she is, so that could be relatable to some people. Maybe not to you, but the whole point is it can be relatable for some people. Now finally, in 1940, there was a song, there was a movie that was performed by the Philadelphia Orchestra and animated by the Walt Disney Company. The movie Fantasia is all about using music to make the story come to life. And they created music, or they created animated stories off of the different segments that Walt Disney produced, except for this one. This one's a little different. <laughs> In the Sorcerer's Apprentice segment, they actually created the story before the music, but let's stay on topic. So the whole idea of this movie was to have music create a story around it, and that's exactly what they did. They even say, and I quote, what you're going to see are the, shoot, I forgot exactly what it said, are the stories and are the stories and music that was produced by many different artists in the minds of in the minds of animators and their imagination. Take that back. They didn't say that exactly, but you got kind of got the idea. So Walt Disney wanted to create music to help tell the story, and that's exactly what he did. So we can all thank him for that but especially we owe our thanks to the conductors and singers who brought these songs to life that will forever live in our heads rent-free and our hearts. That was it. That's it.